The Phantom Hill CTF-2 is finally here. These released on Phantom Hill's website just a day or two ago as I'm recording this. I've had mine for a little while, so it's time to do an initial review. First, gonna recap the CTF-1, talk about what's different with the CTF-2, and talk about how this thing can be used. The original CTF-1 is a multifunction white light and infrared laser aiming module. It's basically intended to fulfill all of the nighttime tasks that you might need on a gun. It has a white light on the left side, it has an infrared illuminator on the right side, and an infrared laser designator in the center line position, as well as buttons to control both of them. It's basically a replacement for an infrared laser aiming module, and a weapon light, and the switchology for it all in one package. I was one of the first people in line to buy the CTF-1 because the civilian market for laser aiming modules is very frustrating. Most of the devices that we get are ones that were originally designed for military and law enforcement use, and they've just had their power levels greatly restricted for civilian use. Also, the basic format of what a laser aiming module is hasn't really changed since, I don't know, the 1990s or something. Some of that is changing with devices like the D-Ball D2 and the Mall C1, which are able to target the civilian side of the market without being completely gimped. Trying to squeeze as much power as possible into a civilian legal device does come with a couple compromises, like the D-Ball D2, which is a huge cancerous tumor hanging off the side of your gun, or the Mall, which costs like $4,000. The CTF-1 was not really intended to replace or one-up any of the existing laser devices on the market. It was more like a supplemental thing that you could buy for a secondary gun, or as a backup, or as an entry-level device. The CTF-1 was cheaper than almost every multifunction aiming laser device on the market when it came out, and it also included a white light, so basically you were saving quite a lot of money in the laser and also saving money by not having to buy a standalone white light. You also didn't have to buy additional switches to control the devices. Not to mention, the form factor of the CTF-1 is very unique. It works well on short guns because you don't have to find room for switches behind it. And the low profile of the body means that you can use the switches on top without getting your thumb in the way of your optic or having to just crank your hand all the way over the top of a massive rail. The CTF-1 is a very simple turnkey device. You really can't modify it and you can't change the way that it behaves. The new CTF-2 is a much more modular device that gives you a lot more options for how to set it up and how to use it. It's also got some small generational tweaks that just make it an overall better design. So let's talk about the CTF-2 and how it's different than the CTF-1. The main difference, of course, is that the heads on the CTF-2 are now replaceable. The CTF-1 has a fixed white light illuminator and a fixed infrared illuminator on the body of the device, and the heads are actually just the focusing lens assemblies that screw over the top of them. The CTF-2, on the other hand, has a pair of 3-volt Surefire compatible attachment points at the front of the device. So that gives you a couple of options. First of all, you can pick your own Surefire compatible heads to install on the CTF-2. You can choose which heads you want to put on the device based on what performance you're looking for and how much money you want to spend overall. You can also swap them around so that the infrared is on the left and the white light is on the right if you so choose. The other obvious external change is that the CTF-2 has three buttons instead of just two buttons like on the CTF-1. The new button controls are a major part of the modularity of the CTF-2. The larger center button activates just the infrared laser designator. The smaller buttons on the side activate the light head on that side of the device in tandem with the infrared designator. Having a dedicated button for just the infrared designator is also very nice. On the CTF-1, the only way to turn on the infrared designator by itself was to hold both buttons down for a few seconds, and then the infrared laser would stay on, and that was just the zeroing mode. There wasn't really a practical way to use just the laser on the CTF-1. It's also not a concern that both side buttons always activate the infrared designator. First of all, it's a low-power civilian legal designator, so it's not like it's chewing up a bunch of your battery life. If you're using your white light, that's creating a significant downrange signature, and the fact that there is also a paired low-power infrared laser doesn't really make a difference. And if you're using your infrared illuminator, there's almost no reason you would not also want the infrared laser on, too. You can also double tap the center button to get a constant on function for the infrared laser, either for zeroing or if you just want to leave it on for some signaling purposes. Double tapping the side buttons will not give you constant on for any of the emitters, which actually pairs very well if you're using something like the KeyG head. The performance of the CTF-2 is dependent entirely on what heads you choose to use it with, so we can't really compare it performance-wise to the CTF-1 or any other devices on the market. This one is set up in sort of the ultimate configuration with the Malkoff E1 HT, that's the hyperthrow white light head on the left side, and the Kiji K1-3, that is the narrower 3 degree version of the Kiji on the right side. I've already talked about the performance of these two heads in other videos, and they perform exactly the same on a Phantom Hill CTF-2 as they do when mounted to a Surefire body. 
The Malkoff E1HD Hyperthrow head performs a lot better than the white light head on the CTF-1. That one had a huge amount of spill and a fairly low lumen rating. It was sort of similar in beam pattern to a Surefire 300 Scout light, however with reduced lumen output. The KG head is a very potent infrared illuminator. I've talked about it before, and I thought that the way a lot of guys were trying to use them was a little bit misguided. You can pair a KG with a standalone laser and a mod button dual lead switch, and you can kind of create your own little ersatz version of a D-Ball D2, but it's a very clumsy way to go about it. I'm pretty sure the KG is more intended to be used in conjunction with a clip-on night vision device for long-range shooting at night, and not really supposed to be used as a substitute for an illuminator on a LAM. However, the Kiji actually works really well on the CTF-2, particularly if you have it in a certain programming mode that happens to play very well with the controls of the CTF-2. You can program the Kiji in something like 32 different modes, most of which are completely worthless, but this one is set up in Phantom Hill's officially recommended configuration. The Kiji has four different power levels, and in this mode, the number of times that you tap the power button tells it which mode to select. So if you press and hold the power button, you get the lowest level, power level 1. If you double tap and hold, you get power level 2, so on and so forth. This works surprisingly well with the CTF-2. If you just push the fire button once, you get the low level mode and the laser together, which actually works really well for close range. If you try to use the Kiji on max power at close range, it'll blind the shit out of you, and it will also completely overwhelm your laser designator. So it makes sense that the most readily accessible mode is the one that works best up close or in an emergency. If you're shooting a little bit farther away, you have a little bit more time to take the shot, and you want some more punch from your illuminator, you double tap, triple tap, or quadruple tap, and you get the other power levels of the Kiji. This works so well on the CTF-2 because no matter how many times you tap or double tap the side buttons, you will not cause the laser to stick on. So you don't have to worry about accidentally flailing your laser around the place after you release the button. This is a very effective configuration for the CTF-2, but it also makes it a fairly expensive package deal. I think you can get the CTF-2 direct from Phantom Hill with this selection of heads for about 1500 bucks. You can get a cheaper configuration by foregoing the Kiji and using a dedicated IR LED head instead. That knocks a lot of money off the price tag, but it also diminishes your IR performance significantly. What you end up with is basically something like a Surefire Vampire head used in conjunction with a Steiner Otel C. A Phantom Hill CTF-2 with a Malkoff Hyperthrow head on one side and a Malkoff EX250 IR head on the other side would still perform quite a lot better than the CTF-1. Way better white light and IR performance, plus better switchology and the ability to use that laser standalone. The CTF-2 also just has some minor improvements on the inside, like the use of springs at both end of the battery compartments to reduce the possibility of flicker or batteries not making full contact. So even if you don't go full bore and drop the $1,500 on a CTF-2 with a Kiji, it's still a better device overall than the CTF-1. Phantom Hill is still not making the claim that the CTF-2 is the ultimate laser device to end all other laser devices, but it is an extremely nice option to have in the market, particularly given that the civilian side of the infrared laser market still sucks. Just in terms of raw performance, a D-Ball D2 and a dedicated white light is still going to do better than the CTF-2, even one with a Kiji on it. The D-Ball D2 and the Mall C1 both are able to focus their infrared illuminator down tighter to 2 degrees versus 3 degrees for the Kiji. The Mall C1 still has the advantage of being able to switch quickly between three illuminator patterns. The D-Ball D2 has the rotating focus ring that can change from super tight to wide flood depending on how you want to have it set up. The D-Ball D2 and the Mall C1 both also have visible lasers, which are nice for zeroing in the daytime. I'm not really adamant about that feature, but it is a convenience. The downsides are weight cost, and bulk. A D-Ball D2 by itself weighs more than a Phantom Hill CTF-2, plus you're still going to have to run a white light on there. You're also probably going to have to buy a switch or switches to control your devices separately and find a place to put those on the rail as well. The Mall C1 is prohibitively expensive for 99% of everybody, including people who already own night vision. It's just outrageous. I think this thing is a total generational improvement over the CTF-1. The small internal improvements are nice, and the ability to use Surefire compatible heads makes this thing way more flexible than the CTF-1. The baseline performance of the CTF-2, even if you don't go for a Kiji, is also going to be better than the CTF-1. The new button layout is something to get used to for me, since I am a little more accustomed to the buttons on the CTF-1. The standalone laser button on the CTF-2 is a nice feature to have, and it also falls very nicely to hand if you're using a thumb over bore grip. It also helps protect the two side buttons from accidental activation a little better than the ones on the CTF-1. The unique form factor of the CTF-1 and the CTF-2 also mean they can still find a home on certain guns that are really hard to cram a bunch of laser modules onto. For example, my 300 Blackout Broke Badger build has a super short rail. It's really hard to get a light, a laser, and switches on there and still find somewhere for my hand to go. 
The CTF-1 is an excellent fit for that gun, and the CTF-2 would be the same thing, but with better performance characteristics. I tested the CTF-2 on a 16-inch rifle with a 15-inch rail and had it mounted fairly far forwards, and I was still able to activate the buttons no problem, but I do have big gorilla arms, so that might not be the case for you. The CTF-2 is a really impressive device, and it's getting a lot closer to challenging the big boys on the market, even if Phantom Hill is still positioning this as an entry level or a backup unit. I'm super happy to have another company competing and innovating in the market, because it's certainly not a crowded market. There's a lot of room for new competitors. If you were on the fence about buying a CTF-1, the CTF-2 might just push you over the edge, and if you're still not convinced, Phantom Hill is already teasing its plans for the next generation of CTF devices, including one that's optimized for use with AKs, and a souped-up version that will be compatible with 6-volt Surefire heads instead of the 3 volts on the current system. So I guess stay tuned. Thank you for watching, guys. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments section. And don't ask why the buttons are green, because I don't know. They also don't glow in the dark, although I was sure they were going to. If you like this channel and you'd like to support me, please subscribe and consider checking out the link to my subscribe star in the video description. I will see you next time.